Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I hope that you are doing well. I wanted to do a quick little life update video because I, you know, you may have noticed that I've not been putting out as many videos as normal lately, and I'm still sitting on notes for at least a dozen videos and footage for a half dozen videos that is right on my phone right now that I have not gotten around to. We've been really busy. I've talked in the past about uh, the past couple of videos about how hard it is having three kids in community college who all have learning disabilities and need support and how frustrating the community college experience has been for all three of them. And so a significant portion of my time I find is parenting and supporting my kids right now. Far more than I imagined, I think for those of us that were Gen X, Xennial, Millennial, we saw our parents drop us off at college and say, bye, good luck, take out this big, huge loan, make this ginormous financial risk and like, good luck, we're not going to support you. We're going to go live our empty nester life or go about our, our lives. And but that doesn't really work for me as an unschooling parent, right? What I've focused on for my kid's entire childhood is the connection and the relationship. And although they are really good and independent learners, they still need support. Like you don't stop becoming a parent just because your kids turn, you know, 15 for Hal. He's starting community college at 15, which is very young, but that's what he wanted to do. Um, you know, 15 and, and 18 and 20, right? Kids still need our support. And I think it's very easy for those of us who were the latchkey kid generation who didn't have a lot of parental support to begin with, and maybe had parents who had high expectations of us, but expected us to do it independently, to not want to perpetuate that with our kids, right? Um, it would be a lot less work for me if I was like, bye, good luck, uh, and expected my kids to just be occupied with school all day, with college all day. But they need a lot of help, especially navigating online platforms, navigating situations in which professors are difficult, unreasonably so in some situations where my kids are really used to communicating with adults as if we are peers one on one. And my kids want to advocate for their position and are finding that there are a lot of rules that are arbitrary and meaningless that support the system without actually supporting the learners. And so a significant portion of my time is spent supporting my kids in this endeavor. They see community college as an investment in their future, right? It's a way to get your education for significantly less cost. Hal is doing a charter school, um, so they're paying for 100% of the tuition. So it means he can get his associate's degree before he turns 18 for free. And so he feels like what he's doing is a sacrifice for himself. He is investing in his own future, even though he doesn't love it all of the time. Although he does love his writing class, his professor's great. And I see this part of parenting as something that I didn't expect when I was younger. Parenting young adults, parenting teenagers is as much work, if not more work, if you are doing it on a really connected level where you are invested in who your kids are as people and you want to help them be set up for success. Now, that's not the same thing as helicopter parenting. It's not the same thing as micromanaging. It's saying, I your parent, I'm here, I'm accessible for you when you need me. And I'm here to support you. If you need to troubleshoot with me, if you need to brainstorm, if you need to say like, hey, mom, I've never been in this position before. Maybe I don't have the experience to navigate this on my own. You've been there. Can we can we partner and you help me figure out how to get through this? That's parenting at this age. And it's great. It's just a lot of work. And that means I haven't had time for other things. I sort of thought like, I sort of thought that after, you know, so many years of caretaking for my parents and then settling their estate, uh, which is still ongoing, that this would become a less busy season of life with less caretaking, less caregiving. And it's not. It's just as busy. It just looks really different. And I think that that's something important to remember for those of us that are homemakers, for those of us that are parents, for those of us that are caregivers, is that those seasons ebb and flow, but we are still really needed we should prioritize ourselves when we can, but we're still really needed and that we don't become obsolete and that the way that our communities are structured, the way that our society is structured, the unpaid labor that is required of us, unpaid labor that we can gift to the lives of people that we care about, that we can gift to our community is so crucial. It doesn't end just because in previous generations, that kind of labor was maybe not gifted in the same way. It doesn't mean that it's not necessary and helpful. That's sort of what's been going on for, you know, a significant amount of my time. We also, you know, I debated about whether to talk about this or not. Um, 
because I'm going to get upset. <laughs> um, we uh, lost almost all of our poultry um, a couple of weeks ago. We had a raccoon that despite having a chicken coop, that was, we felt really predator proof and we've not had uh, any predation in our poultry uh, in 12 years. Um, we have a had a coop that was built out of kind of repurposed materials and the roof was this polycarbonate. And here in Oregon, it gets weathered very quickly. There's a lot of intense sun in the summer for long days and then a lot of rain in the winter. And I guess the roof had gotten brittle enough, a raccoon climbed all the way up on the roof and punched a hole. Um, you know, this, I can't hold up both hands because I'm holding the selfie stick here, but, um, uh, and punched a hole, you know, the size of a large watermelon in the roof of our chicken coop and dropped down and just killed everybody except for three chickens. Um, my ducks are in a different house, um, very secure with a different roofing material on it and they are fine, but we lost almost all our chickens um, a couple days after John Cena passed away from cancer. So we were pretty devastated by that. I never in a million years imagined that a raccoon could punch a hole through the plastic roofing and just drop down in and have a field day. And one of my chickens, Dave, was gravely injured in that and we've been nursing her back to health. She's still not, she's not quite right, but um, she is on uh, out with the flock during the day and comes in the house at night. So we've had to demolish our entire chicken coop. I was so upset. We need to rebuild this completely differently. So we demolished the whole coop. That was a couple day process, stacked it all up. I think we're going to have to rent a dumpster and then we're going to be rebuilding it. So I've been working on sketching plans, researching plans on the internet. I want to rebuild the coop differently so that it is smaller, more compact and has a different kind of enclosed run because bird flu has been an issue in Oregon, I want to make sure that I can have a run that is better enclosed from wild birds should we have bird flu uh, appear in, in the sampling and the testing next summer. So, you know, that's that's been occupying a lot of my time. I know I didn't talk about it extensively and I didn't want to go too much into it because it's, it's upsetting, right? If any of you have lost birds to urban wildlife or rural wildlife, it's frustrating. It's, it's deeply saddening, especially when you have a backyard flock and you have named all of your birds and their pets as much as they are egg producers and manure producers, right? It also means it's going to obligate us to raising chicks next spring, which I was hoping to have one more year off of raising chicks, but that's how life goes. So that's sort of all I've got for a life update. I think I'm just feeling a lot of not really melancholy, but I'm just feeling kind of blah. It's been a really hard four years, uh, especially really hard last three years. And I think it's been much easier for me to not process any of that and just keep trudging along. And I think I've, I've been feeling really kind of not deadened, but kind of numb and kind of flat as a result. So I feel like in some ways I've been jumping from one obligation to another. And I'm so grateful for my children who are just such a light in my life, right? Because I think the last four years have really sucked. The last three years especially have have been really awful for me. I'm really grateful that my kids are giving me the opportunity to continue to learn to parent differently and to try to do better in terms of honoring the relationship with them than previous generations did. You know, I just, I think that it's so... It's such a wonderful gift to have our kids give us the opportunity to heal and to do things better, right? We learn that what happened to us is not what we want to pass on and perpetuate, and we want to find a new way of doing things. And I'm grateful that my children give me that opportunity. It's a privilege to support them as they are continuing to invest in their own futures, right? It's tough, but it's a privilege. And I feel the same way about kind of everything I do with permaculture. There's a lot of pain like all of your chickens getting eaten by raccoons. There's a lot of struggle. There's crop failures. There's um, things that go sideways. It's very humbling to do permaculture, but it's also a real privilege. It's hard, but it's a privilege to try and strive for a better way of being. I think the last three plus years, four years really, of my life have kind of, they've kind of sucked. Despite all of these beautiful, wonderful things in, in my life, they've been really hard. And without those people in my life and without the passion that I have for 
permaculture, I don't know that I would be particularly functional right now. So even if I seem sometimes in my videos or if you know me in real life, like there's a little bit of blah, a little bit of melancholia going on, it's because things are hard and I know things are hard for most people who watch my videos, like we're all really struggling. It's so important to find the ways that life still has meaning and purpose and beauty and that, like amidst the elements of struggle, amidst the things that feel really unjust and feel really tough, amidst the things that are really exhausting, there are so many things that are worthwhile, so many things that can continue to spark passion for us. So I'm trying to focus on those things and say like, this is not how I envisioned my life at 44 at all. This is not where I envisioned that I would be, but there are so many elements that have come to me unexpectedly that are so much better than I would have what I would have chosen for myself. And I can be really grateful for those. The same way that my garden has taught me so much about what it wants to be, the same way that it has shown me that my best laid plans are not always the right way to do things. I feel like life has done that, right? The garden is kind of a microcosm for our whole life. And I'm grateful that even though things are really hard, that I'm still learning and I'm still finding ways that that things are really worth it, right? Um, so I hope that that you can find that too. I hope that if you're going through something that's really tough right now, if you are experiencing all of the myriad ways that life is just really, really difficult in this era, and it's really difficult to be a human being, um, striving for connection and sustainability and just striving to make it through each day, that you can cling to those elements that make it worthwhile, that you can find those elements that that punctuate your life with joy and purpose. And that even though there are so many things that are hard, that the journey is still really, really worth it, right? Even though there's pain and grief, and even though there's struggle, and even though there's injustice, that it's still worth driving ahead and is still worth trying to make a resilient future where we have connections to other people, where we have earth care, where we have people care, where we have fair share, where we have abundance and resilience, because I still believe in those things. And my kids teach me every day that those things are still achievable. So thank you for letting me do a little life update. Um, yeah, uh, I would love to hear in the comments if there's ways that life is giving you an opportunity to find joy and purpose and meaning, even when things are really hard and even when you have not planned for them to go that way. I, I would love to hear about it. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. Please check out my Patreon um, if you are interested in supporting this channel. And I will be back really soon. Bye-bye.